How's it going YouTube? Come at you today with another video. And today guys, what I have to bring for you is my fourth place deck profile from the Niagara Regional. We did go back to back next weekend in Columbus. We're gonna get the three piece and we're doing so well with this deck list. This deck list is crazy. I literally didn't change a single card, but today we're gonna be going through all the different cards in here and talking about my matchups. Uh, what I would change, what I wouldn't change, uh, and just things to think about moving forward because now that we have Fire King in the meta, more people might be trying to experiment with that. We might see that a little bit more. So just different things to consider. Uh, but let's just hop right on into it because a lot of this is still going to be very similar, but I do want to discuss quite a bit. So we have the three of the tier cash, uh, two Rhino, and the standard counts. Uh, once again, I am playing the Serpent, so I don't play the third Rhino. Uh, I really don't believe you need the third Rhino Heart. I keep telling everyone that. You really don't want to see it in your opening hand most of the times. Uh, it's fine to see, but it's also better to search, and it's even better to just mill. Uh, this card is insane. The amount of times that just comes up for me is crazy because of the fact that you can go ahead and just reborn it for no reason. Uh, that is also very, very cool. I'll never not play this card. The card is very, very good. Um, still no Diviner, uh, just playing the typical count for the four. Uh, nothing really to talk about with that. Uh, diviner is just a bad card in my opinion, at least right now. You don't need it because the deck already mills enough. Um, I'm not trying to have my hands brick. Like everything is so, uh, so much of a variety, I would say, uh, which is really solid. Um, these cards are so absurd. Uh, just playing with these now, it just feels crazy. Um, there's so many times today that I was like M Seti pitch Kelbeck, M Seti pitch Trivi Karma, uh, talent draw into M Seti when there's Kelbeck in my hand. Um, these cards are crazy. Uh, this card has multiple effects, which are also very crazy. Uh, it's also just a really good grind card because they have to deal with your planet, they have to deal with your Soliac, they have to deal with your King Sark, and they can't deal with everything. So there's a lot of times where if you are playing against even like a Runic deck, which I did today, um, there's just not enough to out everything, right? And then these cards being able to add back. Uh, one important thing though is Happy has to add back both cards, uh, which is something that I did realize today when one of my cards got uh, moved out of my grave. Uh, definitely unfortunate, so something to keep in mind moving forward. If you're in a mirror match and you need to like force a shuffler, you can do it with this, but at the same time, um, you can always just add back spells or traps to make sure that you can uh, not get like Druid wormed out of a add back for two, right? Um, the other thing here too, uh, two Mali, and then the one Destrudo. Uh, I've seen a lot of lists not playing Distrudo. I know a lot of people ask me a lot of questions in my last profile about why I only play these as sixes and then the one Garura. Uh, I don't really think that the deck is as Beatrice Turbo as people make it seem to be because I've definitely put up a whole board with like SP, Toad, Baron with just standard combo and didn't even need the Beatrice. Um, which is a weird way of thinking about the deck just because a lot of people are like die hard you need to summon Beatrice you really don't like you have these cards now and they play uh, enough pressure uh, this is really cool where you can just like pass with Imseti and you're happy you don't need to commit more uh, if you want to put up the happy uh, with the Imseti is great if you want to put up the Beatrice you can always try to steal things out of your home's graveyard uh, which comes up quite often uh, this deck is by and large a utility deck, so I don't really think that you need to go Beatrice Turbo. Uh, that's what people are expecting, and that's why people aren't putting up uh, Toad before five summons. Uh, so I think that's one thing where reevaluate the deck, look at what it can do, and then I encourage you to try it with a lot less bricks in your deck because we're not playing Hellstraw, we're not playing Heartbeat, we're not playing Shyama, we're not playing all these cards that just make your hands inherently worse, uh, and that's something that I don't want to do. Uh, so I think this was a perfect ratio. Having the Distrito in there, of course, is just so crazy. Uh, there's a lot of times where this just makes you barons in uh, really insane situations. Having a Hobness on your board and then you use this to target the Hobness. This goes down to a four, use this and a six to go into your Baron. Uh, there's a lot of different ways this card just comes up. It's very, very strong. Uh, one and one. I didn't end up cutting the Mothman. I realized that it still came up enough to where I wanted to play it. Um, there's still a lot of times today where I like actually resolved the Mothman effect. Or if you open like super probably Nessie, it'd feel really bad to not have at least one more target in the deck. So I kept it in. Still really good. It's still level four, so you can make Dweller. Uh, really strong. I played against Unchained today, and you best believe that Dweller came in handy. Uh, so it was very strong. It's very good. Uh, going for the field spells. This is just standard. Cards insane. Uh, but I'm still playing three Super Poly and three Talent. I got a lot of questions last time about Super Poly 2. Listen, 
If you're not playing against Pearly and you're not playing against Unchained, that is the best card in your deck. Super Poly just deals with so much and your opponent having a Baron is very common. You being able to normal summon a Rhino and make Guilty is very common. Uh, being able to just not realize that this card is... I feel like people don't realize this card is not just a board breaker. It also can help you push for game and then also have really important interactions with your opponent. So like, even if the end board isn't super polyable, if they have like one monster they extend into and they're super poly with that monster, it's really strong. Uh, it came up against Lab today. It's really good against Lab, but like more importantly, my opponent won Ku Clock to send, reborn the Ku Clock. And uh, instead of them being able to use their big welcome, I chained super poly to use my Shiren and their Ku Clock so they no longer control the Labyrinth monster. Um, so I do think this card's really good. It's also literally just El Shadal Fusion. So if you're in the battle phase and you need more damage, you can just go ahead and attack per game. Uh, so very, very fun, very good card. Especially when one of the cards on your board are a tier name. So you fuse into one fusion and get another one. So it's just a lot of damage out of nowhere. Uh, Talent, this card drew me into some ridiculous things today. Having a Kelbeck in my hand, drawing into an M study, drawing into Kelbeck Keldo was crazy. Uh, being able to use this because it's a you can only activate so my opponent in the last round uh, had Baron Toad and I had double planet double talent so I activated planet it got negated I activated talent it got negated I activated planet I searched I activated talent to take took the Baron uh, it was a really crazy instance uh, so definitely both these cards I think are really important uh, this is another reason why I don't think that you need to turbo any one specific line is because this card just helps you deal with so much. You can steal things, you can look at their hand, you can get free advantage. Um, and also when you're not playing a lot of bricks, the draws off this are insane because your whole deck is it's just relevant. It's just live. Uh, so moving past this, we have the Screams, uh, then just going to go for the Foolishes and the Called By. Um, still not playing the third scream. If we get the Miller's Band, then potentially going up to the third scream. Uh, but overall, these cards are all performed. This was really suboptimal today, but I mean, I just didn't see it. It doesn't mean I wouldn't play it. Um, another card that's just insane. Should not be in the game still. So it's, it's a one of, and it's still the most sacky thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, when you draw it, you just feel insane. Uh, and then the trap lineup, uh, two Soliax and a Trivi. Uh, just, I don't play Meta Noise, that card sucks. Uh, talking about the sideboard. Uh, three Droll, uh, card came up today. Uh, it always felt so optimal though. Uh, every single time that I had it, uh, it was like fine. It won me the Runic matchup, which was solid. Uh, I still would probably play this. It's still a very good card. Uh, just was a little more so optimal today than I would have liked. Uh, still really solid though, still would probably play this. Um, I was told to play two Crow instead of two Jurus Worm. And to be honest, it would have won me my round two, but like, I don't think it really mattered because like Jurus came up enough too, so like, it's hard to tell. I think that Crow is a lot better into multiple situations, but like this is also where I get my other six at post side. Uh, so also still pretty strong. Uh, my opponents had a lot of Magnemots in their graveyard today and I definitely stole a lot of Magnemots and then got this to my hand. Uh, very important. Uh, three Droplet, I play three because I wanna make sure that I can stop things like Dwaller. Uh, it also helps you deal with really ignorant boards that are just like huge. Uh, you can go ahead and pitch really good cards at your hand. Uh, really did like this card today a lot. This came in quite a bit. Uh, being able to just get rid of cards and just interact with your opponent well, especially in the damage step, was really important. Uh, looking more toward the blowouts, um, I didn't see a single one of these all day long. Uh, I think I saw this and then I got hit on my hand and it literally didn't matter. Um, still with ladies, uh, still very good, but did not come up whatsoever. Uh, this card won me against Dragon. Uh, <laughs> so, this uh, my hand was so bad. It was Serpent, double TC Boo, and one or two Scream. And I was like, set one pass. If you got it, you kill me. You know, like if you can out this card, I lose. And uh, my opponent summoned the Tracer. I flipped TC Boo, and they just attacked. And I was like, all right, cool. Uh, top deck Chiron. Chiron pitch uh, Serpent. I got ashed, it's like normal summon Shiren, and my last mill on that was uh, off the scream was the Kelbeck, and my last mill off Kelbeck was Hobbits. So very solid, uh, really solid card. I did get Panker Tops uh, on this afterward, and then I flipped the other one. So, you know, uh, just striker things. It's uh, where we all started playing this card, and now we're still playing this card. Uh, then one crime, card's insane. Uh, I didn't actually see crime, one time today. I only recurred off of it one time, but that was it. 
Uh, then the extra deck. We have our cool little tokens and field center. Uh, Mud Dragon, Gorilla, Drago, and Guilty Gerfried. Uh, this card came out today again. Uh, I don't play Draco. Uh, I think that card's awful now. Uh, just huge hype for Manadium, just died completely. Uh, but this card's absurd. Uh, everything's a warrior. Baron's a warrior. SP's a warrior. They're random warriors in every deck. And then you have uh, Rhino Heart. So, normal Rhino Heart, Super Poly Away. Uh, very good card. It was really nice today when I Super Poly with my Rhino Heart and I was able to go Rhino Heart, pitch the Solyuk out of my hand to add the Shiren. Uh, very strong. Uh, but Guilty is still really strong. Uh, Double Kaleido. I keep getting asked how much this comes up in a day, and honestly, today it didn't come up at all. I summoned Kaleido maybe two times this whole event. Um, I just didn't need it. Um, I focused heavy on my uh, Baron, Beatrice, sometimes uh, Toad, SP. I went for a lot more simplified game states. Uh, still would run this at two, still would. Uh, if you're not going to run two, run Barricade. Uh, Barricade's fine. Uh, it gets you free recursion in the end phase and also helps you pitch the mill areas. Uh, end of the day, I'm still running this at two because I still don't want to get in a position where I feel like I'm forced to have to like recur it, right? Um, one Baron, just such an absurd card. This card. I've heard a lot of people talk about like wanting to ban an extract monster, whether it be like an Opelous at the past or whatever else. I'm not saying ban Baron, but like if there was a card that was ever ban worthy, this card is absurd. Um, Toad, Bahamut, just insane. These cards are so broken. The amount of times that I'll link both of these off, add back a tier cash, go into sprint, and then dump them early is too often. Uh, and that play is so underrated. It's so good. Uh, but I heavily recommend that if you haven't started doing that, to do that. It's very good. Uh, Dweller, uh, again, you shouldn't be siding this. You should be mating this. The second you mill your opponent's deck and you see unchained cards or anything that of the nature that would be shut off by Dweller, you should be doing this immediately. Um, one Beatrice, one Zombie Vampire. Uh, Vamps are good. Uh, Summoned it only a couple times today. Still real strong. Uh, Dark, SP, and Sprint. Uh, still broken cards. I still don't play Crash Sheep. That card is just awful. It doesn't come up enough. I feel like Denier, Crash Sheep, like all these cards that people are still playing, they just like, they don't come up. Or if they do come up, it's a really suboptimal play. And I really don't want to ever put myself into a suboptimal play position. I think that if I'm ever going into a completely just watered down game state, it's just going to be me with SP. You know, just putting up the SP, putting up the Soliac and a tier cash in hand. And that's always enough. Um, playing through SP, I feel like people don't give uh, this card enough credit when it's just SP. Because if you play against certain matchups where they just need their monster on board, uh, it's pretty insane. Uh, you basically just play keep away. Uh, so it's it's very, very fun. And then the fact that you get the cards back in the end phase. So I've banished my own board a couple times just so they come back and I already know I have card advantage. And I'm able to just like run back through the board. Uh, huge shout outs to Craig. Uh, Craig behind the camera did get his invite today. So proud of you, friend. Uh, Thanks, shout outs to Spanko for being here as well. Thank uh, you. Always very fun. Uh, Galzo, I didn't give you a shout out last time for the horse cards. Uh, you know, they're very fun to use. They're very, very fun, very, very good. Um, shout out to all of the homies back home, Austin Smothers, RW Hobbies. If you haven't already checked them out over in Livonia, Michigan, definitely go ahead and do so. Uh, I really do appreciate the partnership. And then, uh, you know, I hope everyone has a great day. We're going for the three piece next week. So comment down below three piece uh, to just manifest it. I really do appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Thank you.